5 times 2 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20. Whatever five you're doing, all the time, 6 times 5 is 30. There is always something else that you're doing as well. <coughs> what? Breathing. Breathing. We breathe to get air in and out. Yeah. Well done, that's lovely. Now, if you want to just swivel round, we'll listen at the front. Right, just pop it. One of the things a doctor warmly. can hear with the stethoscope is the air going in and out of your lungs. goes into your lungs, in, out, in, out, in, out. What happens when you breathe? What do you feel? You can feel your bony rib cage. This protects your heart and lungs. When you breathe, you can feel your ribs move up and out. Air goes down your throat through a pipe called the trachea, which branches into two bronchi, one bronchus into each of the two lungs. These in turn branch into a network of smaller tubes called bronchioles. Oxygen is absorbed into the blood and carbon dioxide passes out in the air sacs. The remaining gases and the waste carbon dioxide are breathed out. On average, there will be three children in every class who suffer from asthma. Sometimes it's caused by an allergy to pollen or animal hair. Sometimes it's triggered by a cold or infection. And sometimes it's a response to exercise. This girl doesn't really have asthma. She's acting. Miss, miss, there's something wrong with Emma. Is it your asthma? Yes. All right. But what happens during an asthma attack? Normally, air flows freely in and out of the lungs through thousands of small breathing tubes, or airways, which branch off the windpipe. Each tube has a muscular wall. Now, during an asthma attack, this muscle goes into spasm narrowing the tube and restricting the flow of air. There is also swelling due to an inflammation of the lining of the tubes and excessive mucus is produced. All three creating symptoms in the person with asthma so they may cough, wheeze or become breathless as air struggles to get through these tubes. Asthma feels like, um, when you get it bad it feels like somebody is two people on either side of your chest and it feels like people are pulling it every time you breathe in and it feels really horrible because um, it's so really pulling tight and it gets all tight and it feels horrible. Asthma is like you can't breathe, like you're breathing for a straw and you're, you're all bunged up and you're all tight, your chest is tight and um, it's like got weights on it, it feels like. So if you use an inhaler, it's a good idea to keep it close by, in case of emergency. Well done. 
All organisms need oxygen for respiration. Oxygen is one part of the air around us, about one-fifth. Breathing is the first step in respiration, the process of taking air in and out of the lungs. The sheet of muscle below the lungs is called the diaphragm. When you breathe, this contracts down, and the muscles between the ribs also pull the ribs up and out. These two actions make the space in the chest bigger. The air pressure inside the chest becomes lower than it is outside, and air is pushed into the lungs. Air passes through a rigid tube called the trachea, which branches into two bronchi, one bronchus into each of the two lungs. These, in turn, branch into a network of smaller tubes called bronchioles. Oxygen is absorbed into the blood and carbon dioxide passes out in the air sacs. These sacs or alveoli are thin-walled and lined with capillaries. The remaining gases and the waste carbon dioxide are breathed out. This man of 53 who smoked himself to death 20 years too soon because he's been smoking and he developed a cough and produced some blood and went to his doctor who did a chest x-ray and showed indeed there was a tumour. In two months he's dead. Although nicotine is poisonous, you can't get enough from smoking to kill you. There are many other chemicals in cigarette smoke and they are grouped together as tar. Each one of these flasks contains the dissolved tar from just one cigarette. This is an example of tar. This thick, black, treacly substance has over 4,000 chemicals in it. We know that it causes cancer. We know that it causes a narrowing of the airways into the lungs. We know that it causes an increase in mucus production. And we certainly know that it damages the little hairs that line the lungs, which help to protect the lungs from dirt and diseases. So the x-ray looks absolutely fine, then we know we're going to have It's to possible to look inside the lungs and airways to check for damage by putting a camera down through the nose. But you shouldn't feel any pain at all. I'm just going inside the nose now. And it's a bit difficult to get a decent view to start with. As we just go inside there, we're going towards the back of the nose. And in a second, well, up here at the back of the nose. Here we are, going out of the back of the nose now. And as I explained, the back of the nose joins up with the back of the mouth. I know exactly where we are on the screen. Now we're looking at the back of your throat from the inside. And as we move down a bit, we'll begin to see the entrance to your voice box. This thing which is going horizontally across the screen is the epiglottis. It's like, little, like a little valve which flaps down over the voice box when we're swallowing so that food goes down the gullet, the esophagus, into the stomach and doesn't go down into the windpipe. We're just coming up to the vocal cords now. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to say hello to me and we'll see them move. Say hello. Hello. And in a second, what we're going to do is we're going to nip through the voice box there, through the vocal cords, into the windpipe, going down into the lungs. That's lovely. And through the vocal cords we go into the windpipe. Now, the windpipe, as I can see it here, is reinforced with rings of cartilage. You can actually see those. In fact, they're horseshoe-shaped rather than ring-shaped. Horseshoe-shaped cartilage. That's fine. We've got an excellent view now. Just here, we've got the division into your right lung and your left lung. And we can see how the tubes actually branch. Just now, you can see it dividing and subdividing as we go look into all those little holes. That all looks absolutely fine. And I then go on down towards the bottom of your right lung. So I'm actually looking down here now. 
right lung. I'm looking right down the bottom of your right lung now. And I can see these various tubes dividing and subdividing. It all looks beautifully normal. A nice non-smoker's lung. The effect of smoke on the lungs is very dramatic. Here are the contents of the chest, the neck organs, the heart in the middle in its sac, and on each side, the lungs. Now, even the normal lung, we can see, is black, with all the soot that he's inhaled with that smoke over the years. And the affected lung is even blacker still, and the bottom of the lung is solid. Whereas the normal lung is quite squidgy, this affected part of the lung is quite solid. It's stuffed with pus. But we must now look inside the trachea, the windpipe, to see just what was making him cough so and where that blood came from. I can get down here on both sides, but there's growth here that I can feel. You can see that there's the blood-filled tubes on either side. And we've got this white mass of tumour so that when my doctor friends looked down a little telescope, they could see that this was growing through the wall of these air tubes here. And that's what was giving him his cough. And it was that which was causing this bleeding.